So, what do you think? What do you think? What do you think it is that makes it feel compelling? To poke around at that problem in a sort of explanatory manner. See this? I don't like it. I don't like it at all. I really, I really, really don't like it. It's not enough to just say, no thanks. No, thank you. <laughs> I'm not the only one who doesn't like it. We hear you say. Nobody really likes that. We, just, we shouldn't have to put up with it. We just shouldn't. I'm going to get online. I'll bet there's others feel the same way. Yep. It's a movement. I'm going to join the war against. There's a war against drugs and a war against poverty and a war against teenage pregnancy and a war against poverty and a war against drugs and a war against teenage pregnancy and a war against cancer and a war against drugs and a war against teenage pregnancy and a war against and a war against and a war against and a war against and they're all getting bigger because the more you look at something, the more law of attraction says, oh, here's more, here's more, here's more, here's more. So we want you to realize that while it is a value for you to know what you don't want, while it is helpful to know what you don't want, while solutions are born out of defining the problem, the more you define the problem, the more you define the solution. We just want to be very clear that while you're still defining the problem, you cannot catch a vibrational glimpse of the solution. And law of attraction is responding to you where you are offering your vibration. And there are a lot of people who think that just by saying positive words or by saying it in a positive way, that that's enough that law of attraction should now take them at their word and we say law of attraction does not take you at your word law of attraction takes you at your vibration and the only way you really know what your vibration is is by the way you're feeling so you have two indications of whether you're leaning away from who you really are and what you want or toward who you really are and what you really want the first first evidenced is the way you feel your emotions but many of you have become so determined and strong and valiant and vigilant and hardy and determined that you can withstand a whopping amount of negative emotion. Those who were here when you got here sort of trained you that way. Quit your crying. <laughs> Quit your crying, they said. Keep a stiff upper lip. The world doesn't revolve around you. It really does. <laughs> it really does. Your world exactly revolves around you. And if you're keeping a stiff, stiff upper lip in the face of something unwanted and not doing anything about changing your focus until the tension goes away, until the tension goes away, you cannot be a vibrational match to the solution. That's what that tension that you feel is. That's your indication that you're not in the vicinity of who you really are and what you really want. You were source energy before you came into these bodies. Do you know that? You don't remember it. Do you know that? You don't remember it. Do you know that? You sort of have to take our word for it, but do you know that? You don't remember that. You were source energy. You don't remember that because you came forth wanting new exposure to new experience, but you don't remember, you don't remember what was before you were in this physical body, but you don't have to remember that because the larger part of you is still there. And that larger part of you is still emanating strong signals to you. So you don't have to remember it. You can feel it. You can feel the vibration of who you came from, but better stated who you have become. Because as you came forth from this source energy, a part of your consciousness into this physical body, as you explore here, knowing what you don't want and therefore knowing what you do want, every time you emanate that rocket of preference, the inner being part of you becomes it, absorbs it, amends who you are, becomes the fuller version of who you are as a result of this most recent exposure to life. So you can tell all day, every day, in every moment that you are conscious or awake or aware, you can tell 
whether you are vibrationally in the vicinity of who you are you feel contentment satisfaction ease and flow love and passion exhilaration in other words you feel fabulous when you're tuned in to the energy of who you really are and the less close to that frequency you are the worse you feel the more you feel frustration or lethargy or anger or fear or depression in other words the emotional guidance scale really indicates one thing and one thing only but it's a big thing it indicates your relationship with who you really are now many people at first when they hear us say that think mm, I don't know Abraham I've always pretty much known who I am and I'm in this body I was little now I'm big I was young and now I'm older but I pretty much know I think who I am we say not even close most humans have no real sense of who you are you don't know your power you don't know your wisdom you don't know your clarity you don't know your stamina you don't know your love you don't know your worthiness you are allowing but a scanty little part of yourself because you're fixated on problems and using those problems as your predominant point of focus most people offer most of their vibration which oh it's so important because your vibration equals your point of attraction what you're putting out is what you're getting back most people offer the majority of their vibrational output because of something that they are observing but they're not very particular about what they observe do you ever watch television ah. If you do you are bombarded by unwanted stuff and it comes at you much faster than you can sort sift decide and pivot much faster much faster so you just hear it and 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 hear it hear it and respond hear it and respond hear it and respond hear it and respond hear it respond hear it respond and you let that television train your frequency into unwanted territory and then you wonder why the things that are in your vortex the things you really want don't come to you in the way we profess that they should come what's wrong with me you say we say nothing in the world is wrong with you but you sometimes let unwanted things do the majority of training you into a frequency that then you say well I'm tough I've got a stiff upper lip I'm determined I can play full on I can make it happen I will make myself financially prosperous I will bring myself into alignment with what I want and we say really friends you cannot force it you have to feel it into place you have to allow it you have to surrender the resistance in order to allow who you really are to be